As I've been telling candidates who have come to see me, you can run the best campaign, you can even become the nominee, and you can have the election stolen from you. Ah, my gosh. This is a new one. It was just stolen, right? I mean, I, how exactly was it stolen, Hillary Clinton? Did the, they break into the Diebold voting machines and actually change things entirely? I mean, keep in mind, um, she ran, what do you call it, a perfect campaign? Completely ignoring key states like Michigan and Pennsylvania, important political states. Uh, she doesn't get it. But you know what? I guess it doesn't matter because she's selling something else entirely. Not that anybody's buying because no tickets are being sold uh, at, at regular prices. They've been slashing them. This is the evening with the Clintons worldwide tour or U.S. tour, I guess, that they're doing. Uh, sales are plunging. Prices are dropping very quickly. There are some reports of tickets going for as little as two bucks. <laughs> this is like P.T. Barnum. They're taking the show on the road. The election was stolen. Joining me right now is American Majority CEO Ned Ryan. Ned, I, I'm curious, is there any precedent for this? Because let me just say, like, I'm going to full out call this just plain old tacky, okay? They're out there trying oh, to yeah. sell tickets to Americans. I'm like, you guys don't have enough money? I mean, it's one thing for a president to go and give a speech uh, and, and talk to a you know, certain amount of people, get paid for that in a speech. This is a whole different ballgame. This is vaudeville style. Let's take the show on the road. You know, mom and pop get up there and say that election was stolen. Has any other president done anything like this? Well, I doubt uh, we've had pres a president and a spouse as shameful as the Clintons. I, I call them the grifters. No, but uh, just, just, just no a president, shame, like selling tickets. Right. You know, come That's hear a, me a, speak. Two dollars a piece it, now it, because it, I can't get the regular going not, right. <laughs> exactly. At least you would think they would have some self-awareness how shameful and embarrassing it is that some of those tickets are going for two dollars. But when I heard that clip, Trish, again, my initial reaction was stolen by whom? Let's 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 name it. If you really think that somehow $300 of Facebook ads in Pennsylvania that were inept or $832 of Facebook ads in Michigan somehow swung a multi-billion dollar campaign, stop. That's not believable. And the fact of the matter is Hillary wants to blame anyone and anything except for the one thing that's truly responsible for her loss in 2016, herself. She yeah. was a terrible candidate. She ran a terrible campaign. And guess what? She'll never be president. It, it's really amazing. I mean, you got to think about the ego, right, of some people to have Oof. no self-awareness, to, to know that, you know, you That's just, right. you're not cut out for it. And by the way, and I say this objectively, her husband was, okay? He was a good politician. He could get up there and play to the crowd, in part because he liked the crowd. He liked people. Right. And he c communicated with them at a level that she just, you know, clearly didn't get. He, even he said, you know, hon, you better go to, uh, I probably didn't call her hon, but y you should go to Pennsylvania. And she opted not to. I mean, what a lousy, lousy politician. And then, by the way, she told all the coal miners that she wanted to put them out of business. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. I mean, it was a terrible campaign with a terrible message. I don't think they've really learned their lesson again on identity politics. Uh, again, nobody told them they didn't, you know, they shouldn't uh, campaign in the Rust Belt. And again, those turned out to be the deciding votes. But the, but the thing that's troubling to me, tr uh, Trish, in all of this is the fact that you've got Hillary, you've got Stacey Abrams. They're all starting to question the results of these elections. And one of the great aspects of our constitutional republic is the peaceful transfer of power, in which one party accepts the fact that they lost an election and they hand over the power of the state to the other party. And what they have been doing, the left was lecturing Donald Trump in 2016 that he had to accept the 2016 results as legitimate. And now for the last two and a half years, they have been doing I'll anything but accepting the legitimacy of those elections. And that's a troubling fact. Now Democrats well, she wants to get rid think, of the, you know, she wants to get rid of the electoral college. She wants to get I mean, rid of the electoral she, college. She, uh, she wrote a piece on that and uh, she wants to turn everything right. upside down so that, I don't know, maybe she can run again. Do you think that well, in her well, hearts of hearts is the desire? I mean, why why are they doing a vaudeville show selling tickets for two dollars a piece? I'm still I'm just you know, they, they have enough money that they really do. Right. They have enough money to be out because there on tour fraud. like this <laughs> because of the charity. <laughs> right. Where they took money from all kinds of people, including countries right. that we're not so friendly with. <laughs> that's right. No, I, and, and, and the thing that's amazing to me do this other aspect again, Hillary just can't accept the fact that she she lost. But Democrats now seem to think that something's broken with our democracy when they lose elections, that somehow they're supposed to win every election. Here, here's, a, here's a piece of advice to them. Why don't you lose with dignity and accept the fact that people like a really good economy, they like their jobs, they like wages going up, all these ideas and things that 
Donald Trump and Republicans have put in place. And perhaps they should use some common sense and look at those results and go, hmm, maybe it's not them. Maybe it's us. Maybe we're doing something wrong. But I think they lack complete self-awareness from Hillary to the rest of the Democrats. Yeah, I mean, clearly, I mean, we heard Robin Byro, who is a Democratic strategist who, yeah. who worked for Obama on his campaign. Even he's saying, yeah, they need to lose this whole idea of impeachment because it's sending them down the wrong path and now going after A.G. Barr. I'll tell you what path, though, it's going to send all of us down as a nation, and it should. It's going to send us down the path of figuring out how the heck this all went down and how the heck we That's were right. using... The opposition research that had never been vetted by our own FBI, nor Partisan even told propaganda. to the judge it was opposition research, to get a FISA warrant. Yep. That's right. No, I mean, and, and I would argue, Trish, it was partisan propaganda. This was paid for by the DNC. It was paid for by Hillary. Uh, the, it is a crime to falsify FISA applications, and someone, through willful omission, did not tell the FISC that they were using partisan propaganda as evidence for these applications, not once or twice, multiple times. Again, it was four times. It was once and then renewed three times. Mm -hmm. And I think we've got to get to the bottom of this. This is deeply troubling. The rule of law, people using the surveillance state and law enforcement as political weapons against political opponents. And the reason that they're so scared of A.G. Bartrish because they're afraid of where this will go. I think it will go to the Obama West Wing. I think it will go to the top of our intelligence communities, and I think it will go to the top of our law enforcement. Oh. And I think there has to be okay. a reckoning. People have to go to jail for what All they right. did.